so much, uh, Lee Ann, and uh, thanks for staying with us, uh, Shamila Batoy. And um, just getting back to, you know, this notion of sometimes the NPA doesn't really get its act together in terms of following through with prosecutions. And um, Afri Forum has been rather vocal on this front. And um, because they threaten public prosecutions, they say that, in a sense, is forcing the NPA to really follow up and follow through on some cases. Um, your view on that? I think perhaps in the past there was a need to force the NPA in certain instances uh, to prosecute. Um, in my view, that need is not necessary anymore because the NPA will do what it is required to do. Um, so, you know, AFRI Forum has a role to play and they will play that role. But certainly we are prosecuting cases not because we are being forced to by AFRI Forum, but because there's sufficient evidence and we need to proceed with cases. Sometimes cases don't actually happen as quickly as people would like to. And that's for various reasons. I think people don't realize that, you know, the, the vacancy issue in the NPA is a real issue. We have lost almost 700 prosecutors from 2015 out of a capacity of about 3,500. So we have a vacancy level of over 20%. And, you know, 25% in the asset forfeiture unit, in the specialized commercial crimes uh, unit. And so often we just simply aren't able to move as quickly. And the demands in the NPA are huge. So, you know, AFRI Forum may have one case or a couple of cases and then there's a lot of pressure because things are not moving as fast. And then when we do do something, it's as if we've reacted to that pressure. But it's not the case. We are actually dealing with cases because we, that is our responsibility. And in terms of prioritizing these cases, and um, one of the things that I've always harped on is those case files that came through from the TRC and why mm. the NPA hasn't acted on that and why people have been forced in some instances, families mm -hmm. who have the wherewithal and the resources to do so have had to do that themselves. Yes. What is the NPA's story with regard to those TRC files? Yeah, this is a, a, a very complicated issue. And look, we've had the case, the Rodriguez matter that was in court recently. And uh, what emerged in that, you know, case is that there was pressure at various levels for the NPA not to prosecute cases. Um, and so um, we do have a unit in the office that is working very, very closely with um, the representatives of certain families of, of deceased persons in order to uh, fast track these cases. But within well, the NPA... What do you mean by fast we... track and, and, and which cases? Because the NPA, since the TRC concluded its work, hasn't prosecuted not a single one of those cases. You know, as I said, there were many constraints at the time to actually deal with these matters. And I think there's people can be justifiably unhappy about the way in which these matters were dealt with. And so, you know, we've had inquests that we've uh, reopened recently, uh, looking at the Neil Agate case, the Hafiji matter, where these matters have been reopened. But as the NPA, what we have decided is that there were, I think, about 69 people that died in detention. And so in the NPA, we are looking at these holistically and saying we shouldn't only be looking at those cases where families have the means to actually put some kind of pressure on us, but that we should be looking at these 69 deaths in detention. 300 files we were can... handed over to the NPA. Yes, there were a number of files that were handed to the NPA. And so we are now, you know, since I've taken office and we are trying to actually, you know, these cases are old cases, and so they come with their own challenges. Where but that's part of the criticism, yes. where it is said that given what we know now of some of the pressure that was brought to bear on the NPA at various points in um, you know, the lifespan of these cases, that the NPA is deliberately not investigating these cases. I think that's an unfair criticism. You know, um, knowing what I know at the moment, I think that's unfair. I think there was a lot of pressure on the NPA not to actually prosecute. The NPA, I, I, I think there were things that the NPA could have done differently. I, we must accept that. And so, you know, we are now working very closely with the, with the legal advisors of certain families. And we are looking at support. They are also providing support with regard to investigative capacity, uh, working together with the SAPS 
so that we could actually bring cases not just against the foot soldiers, but really try to, to move to those most responsible for those atrocities that were committed during the apartheid era. And uh, as we wrap this up, I have to ask you about um, the Ramaphosa leaks, and I'm sure you've seen that. And your name has come up on that, and it says that one, uh, uh, one and three quarter million was paid to you on the 14th of March, 2018. W what's your response to that? Well, I'm not sure whether I should dignify that with a response, actually. I think it's important, you know, given the position that you occupy and um, given the perception that we spoke about that's so important about an NPA that is able to do its sure. job independently. I think it's very important that you do the it respond to rubbish. it. It's a rubbish. It's a lie. So it's, it's, it's a total fabrication. Absolutely. So uh, with regard to your relationship with the president, you know, is there anything in that relationship that would warrant this type of lie, as you put it? Absolutely nothing. So, you know, when people, uh, I don't know why people do this, and I don't want to speculate about it, and I will not be distracted by it. I think these are tactics to try to distract you from, from doing your work. And this is the start of it. There's going to be a lot more. And I realized, you know, I have to fortify myself against these attacks. When I was interviewed, I said, this is a shark tank. Um, and it seems like the attacks have started. But this will not distract us from our important work. Well, Shamila Batoy, thanks so much for stopping by. Um, our National Director of uh, Public Prosecutions, uh, Shamila Batoy, and uh, speaking to us about uh, the various uh, cases that they are looking at and also the role of the NPA in uh, what is unfolding in South Africa at the moment, be it at the commissions of inquiry or with regard to some of the flare-ups that we are seeing in the country right now. Let's take a break. <laughs>